Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace, and today is Monday, May 20th, I think, which is insane. And I realize I say that every week, but where is the month? It was just the beginning of May. Um, this is a podcast not about the calendar or how t- how fast time passes, but this is a podcast about knitting, um, books, baking, and cats, uh, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do the most. And also today, everyone, we are giving away some yarn because it's awesome and I'm celebrating that I have a thousand subscribers and how amazing is that? And so the giveaway closed this past Sunday. I don't remember what the date was. That would be yesterday, and today is the 20th, so that would be the 19th. I'm really good at math, clearly. Um, Again, like I said, this is not a podcast about the time or the date or anything, because that's just not my strong suit. Um, So yes, today we're giving away some yarn. I did do that this morning, and I have a lucky winner's name that I'm going to announce in just a moment once we get into the podcast. If you would like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. Um, I'm most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there or any of the other places, whatever you would like to do. Um, uh, This is uh, random. I was just looking at uh, some sock yarn over there and I just got an idea of what to do with it because I have no idea what to do with it because I don't knit socks and I know that was just super random. I apologize. Um, Social medias. If you (laughs) are wanting to be to find out any about any of the things that I talk about in this podcast, you can check them out in the show notes, which are on my blog. If you are on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below. Or if you're on my blog, everything is already there just for you. Um, in addition to that, I also work at a yarn store. It's called The Modern Skein. It's in Montgomery, Texas. And all of that information, social media, website, address, please come hang, hang out with us if you are local or not and come and visit. Um, all of that will be in the show notes so you can check out all that information. Um, and yes, we have a, a fun discussion y knitting y podcast today, and I'm very excited. I'm raring to go today. Um, there was a big chunk of time that was like switched around in my schedule on Monday, which I'll go into later. Actually, let's just finish this intro and get into it so I can actually talk about it. Anyway, so. I have tea today. I have hot tea because that is what I drink in the morning because it's the morning right now. What up? Um, if you would like to go grab something tasty to drink or something to snack upon or an animal to snuggle or laundry to fold because I have laundry to be folding later and I'm not really looking forward to that, but that's okay. That's not the point. Again, this is not a podcast about laundry. Um, do any of those things, and you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. Oh, that is a that is a good cup of tea right there. So, since we're at the top of the episode and we're talking about very happy, positive things, let's just go ahead and announce the winner because I'm sure you're all really excited to know. So, um, thank. Uh, what? Uh, (laughs) Thanks to everyone, all 77 of you who entered my giveaway, which was just mind-blowing. Like, mind-blowing. Um, I had 77 comments answering the question of, where do you like to knit the most? What is your favorite place to knit? And do you prefer knitting or purling? Um, I had so much fun reading everybody's comments. They were absolutely wonderful. Um, I think the the common theme was either podcasts or Netflix, sitting in a comfy chair on a couch or outside. And the resounding answer was usually knitting, though some not everyone like. Not everyone hates purling. Some people don't mind it. They also like the texture, which I like that answer. That was a very good answer. I apologize. I don't remember who that was. But someone said, I like knitting. I don't mind purling because I like the texture that it gives. Which I I think is a very, very good answer. It's very diplomatic and it makes a lot of sense. And I would totally agree with that. So, unfortunately, there can only be one winner. 
I, um, all of you are winners in my heart, but I only have one skein to give away, which is this beautiful potluck skein from Hedgehog Fibers. It is the one of, or it's on their singles base. This colorway was made specifically for the modern skein for a one year anniversary, so that is cool. You are getting an exclusive colorway. Lucky you. So, without further ado, I would like to have a drum roll. And hopefully I'll put one in editing. Let's have a remind me, re reminder. Future me, please put in a drum roll. Um, and I would like to announce that the winner is D. Thompson. So congratulations, Dee. You have won this beautiful skein of yarn. You can do whatever you would like with it. Maybe it will sit and you can just look at it because it is beautiful and that's what I do all the time. I buy beautiful skeins and then they just like sit there and I look at them and I'm just like too excited to knit with them. So you could do that or you could just jump right in and knit something, whatever you like, or crochet, whatever you would like to do. Um, her comment was, I have it written down, my favorite place to knit is at home in my big comfy recliner, and I prefer knitting, but don't mind purling. Congratulations on the 1K. So thank you so much, Dee, again, for entering. Congratulations on winning. Um, and thanks again to everybody, all of you, all. Even if you didn't comment, you are awesome. Everyone is a winner in my heart, in my mind, like... Yes. So, D, if you would like to message me either on Ravelry or on Instagram or um, YouTube, I think that's the thing. If you, if you want to do that, somehow contact me and get me your address, or you can send me your email address and we can correspond that way um, so I can get this in the mail to you. If you don't respond, maybe in the next, like, week and a half, two weeks or something, I will redraw and get someone else. But thank you. Thank you so much, D. Thompson. Um, please send me your information, your address. That would be awesome. And I will get that in the mail to you as soon as possible. Yay for winning yarn. There's nothing like good free yarn. That's just... you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> so everyone, we're going to have a little bit of story time. Because this this past week was not, it wasn't bad, but it had an event in it that kind of messed up a lot of things. Kind of. I don't know. That's very dramatic. It is kind of dramatic though. I don't know. We'll see. Well, you can be the judge of that. So I was driving home from work on Thursday, which was the, today's the 20th, um, and Sunday was the 19th, and then that would have been the 17th of May. Um, I was driving home and uh, unfortunately got in a car wreck. I had a green light and I was going through and someone did not stop and just kind of barreled through and hit the front of my car. Um, it was absolutely terrifying. I will not lie. That was so scary. Um, and uh, thankfully I am fine for the most part. The people in the other car are fine. My car is not fine. I currently have a rental again. Um, so that's a bit of adjustment. Uh, the I had the typical things like achy neck, all that kind of stuff. That is gone. I did hit my knee pretty badly. Or not pretty bad. It's not terrible. Um, I hit the knee underneath my steering wheel, and so I have a pretty big bruise there. It looks kind of nasty, um, but it's... Today, it is significantly better than it was on Thursday. There's no, no breaks, no nothing. It's fine. Um, so I'm getting back into the swing of things, doing very light workouts and all that kind of stuff, stretching and just kind of taking care of it, watching it to make sure it doesn't get worse, and if so, we will get it checked out. But, so that uh, happened, um, and uh, one thing I would like to discuss, and I was laughing about this with my mom on the phone very shortly after it happened, in between bouts of weeping uncontrollably, because that's what I do, um, and I'm sure everybody does, <laughs> because it's a scary thing. Um, that while I was waiting for the uh, 
police to kind of pull up their report and finish everything up because thankfully the guy was very nice and took full responsibility and because he had run the red light and all that jazz so that was very wonderful they were just putting everything together and I was like I should really I really just want to knit <laughs> right now I'm sitting in my smashed up car I have tears rolling down my face it's really humid because it's Houston and um so I did and uh, I have a picture of it. You can't really tell what was going on, but I do have a picture of me knitting in my car very shortly after this uh, accident happened. And like, there is, like, there's obviously lots of examples of how therapeutic and like how calming and peaceful knitting can be. But in that moment, that was just like, whoa. I'm just being reminded of the the goodness of knitting and also just being reminded of like the little things that like God was blessing me with in addition to keeping me safe because it could have been much worse I am very glad to just have a, a knee problem um, and just like having the knitting and being able to knit on just plain nothing for like not even a minute maybe a minute two minutes that was enough to kind of like help me calm down a little bit and like be prepared to talk more to the police um, and start working on getting my car towed and where how I was gonna get home thankfully um, my parents live in Houston as well if you didn't know that they live in Houston and so they were able to come and pick me up because Sam my husband, if you're also new, if you didn't know that, he's my husband, um, he had literally just landed from a business trip, um, and so he was at a, a distant airport, um, but he landed about 30 minutes after it happened. Um, so I got to leave him a very scary voicemail, fun times. Didn't enjoy doing that. Um, so while, think like, this knitting just really helped me calm down, as much as I could to kind of like collect my thoughts and just like get up and finish what I needed to do before I could like let it all go and like continue crying uncontrollably. <laughs> um, another thing that I would really like to tell you guys that in addition to that like these after this happened there were so many like little things that God put in my life and like in my way that I just kind of stumbled on that was like this is it's gonna be okay like he's clearly taking care of me and I'm gonna be fine um so I had to wait in my car to for the AAA person to come and tow my car which was awesome he was very nice and that was another very huge blessing he was very kind um, and was concerned that I was crying and was making sure that I wasn't hurt and it's like it's okay I just cry a lot and then I also cry more when people are nice to me when I'm crying and it's just really like it's a big cycle um, fun fact about me if you didn't know that <laughs> um, so I, I didn't have a car I didn't have a place to like sit while waiting for my parents or for Sam whoever got there first um, to come pick me up and I knew that there was a Panera and very close by so I gathered all my stuff from work and from the gym that morning and I walked to the Panera and I sat down and I got a latte and a cookie and was just like okay gotta keep it together until I get home because if I shut down because when I start like crying a ton I will shut down totally shut down um, which can be a problem if you're like really trying to get through something tough and you're by yourself. So I was just sitting there trying to read my book on my Kindle and knit on this thing that I've been working on, which I'm going to show you. Um, I apologize, this is a very long rambly story time, but it's kind of important and it does have to do with knitting. So um, I got to this Panera. I'm all settled there. Um, this... Uh, and I like, I notice there's a big group in the back of the Panera and I don't really think anything of it. I just some like, oh, it's probably like a women's book club or something like that, or just like a bunch of friends who have gotten together and go on my merry way. 
and uh, one of the ladies comes over and she was like, oh, I see that you are knitting. We are a knitting and crocheting group and we would love for you to come over and sit with us. And in my mind I was like, oh my, this is this is incredible. Like, how is this even happening? And also in my mind, I was like, I'm trying not to cry all the time right now. <laughs> so I was trying to keep it together. So I was like, I don't really feel like coming and joining you at the moment. I'm kind of going through a lot right now, but thank you so much for your invitation. I might come if I feel like up to it before my ride arrives. Um, and so... She said that she was sorry for me and hoped that I was doing okay and um, and went back to the group and I was like, oh my goodness, this is another huge blessing. This is a thing that God has placed in my life that I know would minister to me right now and I, like, I know this would. So I, I packed up my, my stuff because I was not doing very well <laughs> and reading was not taking my mind off of anything. Um, and in fact, I was just turning pages without actually having read anything, so it, if anything, it was just being unproductive. So I went and joined them, and those ladies were so welcoming, and they were so kind, and I don't remember anybody's name, and I'm very sorry for that, but they were so kind, and like, it's just a huge testament to how wonderful and kind the knitting community is. I'm picking up my tea because it's time for a little tea sip. Um, like, that's just so wonderful, and I felt so included, and, um, the lady who would come over to invite me, she, like, invited me to come sit between them on this couch so I wasn't, like, on the, the outside in a random chair, and it was wonderful. And I just sat there, and I knit, and I talked with these people that I had just met about, and we have knitting in common, which is wonderful and we we're all at the Panera and I had met a couple of them because they've come to the store which is wonderful um so yes if you're part of that knitting group I thank you from the bottom of my heart like that was truly amazing <laughs> it was one of those things that I didn't think that I needed that but I actually really did and so it really helped me just kind of like oh oh that was a big bummer but it's okay because I'm fine Cars can be fixed. Humans, it's harder to fix humans, and I'm fine. And people are really nice, and they are wonderful. And I just felt very included and just very welcomed in my time of, like, a lot of emotionalness and hardness and whatever. Um, so again, yes, if you're a part of that knitting group, thank you so much for inviting me. I hope to come and sit with you guys again. If you are in the Houston Tomball Cypress area, there's a Panera at 2920 and 249 um, that they have a knitting group on Thursdays in the evening. So uh, I'm sure that they would welcome more people. I hope to go do that sometime soon um, because like I said they are truly wonderful ladies and I hope to see them again very soon. Either there or at the Modern Skein. Hopefully they'll come to the Modern Skein. That would also be awesome. But can't go wrong with knitters people. We are a a wonderful group of people. We really are. Always a helping hand. Always looking out for each other. It's really awesome and there's not like I can just keep on repeating that it's awesome because I just don't really I don't have words so thank you for including me thank you for being so kind um like I said I am so grateful that I'm okay um it was scary like I said it was terrifying <laughs> I'm grateful that I had my knitting if I didn't that would have been really rough um and I'm grateful for my parents for coming and pick me, picking me up and talking to my mom, talking to everybody in my family. Um, but my mom helped me help calm me down the most because Sam was in the air and couldn't talk to me. And then when he did, when he landed, I could talk to him. But yes, it helps to have really awesome family and friends around when you're in trouble. It's just. It's just wonderful. There's so much more I could say about that, but that's all I'm going to say for right now. So, 
that happened, and now we're going to move on to our regular knitting content because I have a lot of progress to show you guys. And we're going to take a little tea break. Time, why don't you get back to your laundry, continue float folding your laundry. I would have stopped and just, like, listened. If you didn't, that's fine. I'm not saying that you had to. But I probably would have stopped because I would have been procrastinating folding my laundry. Because I do that. Um, anyway, it's time for a tea break. Let's take a tea break. So, very quickly... I have some uh, very little acquisitions that I'm going to go through right now because they're very small. Um, one of which was a gift from my mom and my brother. They found this at War World Market, which is a very wonderful place. Like, they have the coolest stuff. And there's the cat. Hi, you always come out of nap time when I'm recording and you come and look at me like I haven't given you enough food. I know I have, little child. You have plenty of food. Anyway. I'm very sorry. So they found me this pin and uh, it's very special to me just because they found it and they thought of me and that's just very special. But also if you know me, like if you, uh, I, I would say in person, but I also text this as well. So this is a very, very accurate to me thing. I say this quite a lot and that is yeah. And it's a pin. People. How awesome is that? I love it. Yes. I say that all the time. And I text it. So if you if you know me, especially at the yarn store, you are probably very aware how often I do say that. Um, and I am not ashamed. Anyway, moving on, that was very wonderful. The pin. I'm very excited to put it on my bag. Or I'm Kind of, I'm not running out of space on my happy bag, but I could put it on my toffee bag as well. Anyway, so, uh, what, this actually, uh, this was another huge blessing that happened, and it's just kind of crazy how it worked out. So, we went to go get my, uh, rental car, excuse me, words, um, and the where the rental car place is, there happens to be a Hobby Lobby. Which, as we've discussed as of last week, <laughs> Michael's doesn't have a good buttons selection. Hobby Lobby and Joanne's on the other hand do. And I was like, oh. I didn't say this, but in my mind I was like, oh, that's a Hobby Lobby. They probably have good buttons, but we're focusing on the rental car right now so we're not gonna worry about it and the the guy who is taking care of our rental car stuff was like well it'll be ready in about like 15 20 minutes or whatever or we're just gonna like service it or whatever before you take it so you can go and do whatever and Sam of all people not that this is a huge surprise but like he offered to go to Hobby Lobby so I could get my buttons for my Lady Mademoiselle Dandelion cardigan. And that was just so, so sweet. And it was just like, oh, I need my buttons. Like, this is just so wonderful. This is going on in such a really hard time right now and my car is all smashed up and I have to drive a rental. Eh. But I have buttons now. And I, they also had the buttons that I wanted, or like buttons that were on the list of buttons that I was looking at. They're not the mother of pearl, but I think actually these are better. Um, so I'm very excited. I also didn't have the sweater with me, and I knew in my mind I was like, this is probably kind of a risky game I'm playing here. But I think it'll be okay. I think yes. I'm thinking a definite yes. I'm very excited. So these are what they're, they are up close. They're not plasticky. Oh, I guess they are kind of plasticky, but they almost have like a, a, like they're a resin or like a, they're not, they don't have a wooden thing, but they're also kind of like, I don't know, they're hard to describe. I'll just let you look at them, how about that? So I feel like that, I, I apologize for my terrible nails. They're really bad. 
Um, can't go wrong with these buttons. These ends still need to be woven in, but these buttons will be on as soon as possible, everybody. So I know how my buttons. Thanks to Sam. Um, he was very kind about it. We had fun wandering around the Hobby Lobby um, waiting for the rental. So this, it's just the little things. The little things are just really like, oh, oh, that's really wonderful. I'm really glad that that happened. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have a, a Yas pin and I have my buttons and now I can finish and wear my cardigan for the very hot weather that is coming. Um, but I'll be able to wear it eventually. I say this right now. So yes, those are my two little acquisitions. Um, for this week. And yeah, so let's get on to knitting content, shall we? I did work on my sorbet cardigan. I did, in fact, rip out the um, cuff. Like I discussed last week, the sleeves are not long enough. And so I ripped out the, the one of the cuffs so far um, and will be knitting another stripe on both of the sleeves, which will not take long because each stripe is around 23-ish rows. And I think the ribbing that I did was about 12. So, and it's only the 20th, so I got plenty of time. I would really like to get that done before the end of the month. That would be really amazing. Um, so let's show my test knit, shall we? This is for Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns. She is designing stuff, and they all of her things are wonderful. And I have grand plans to knit other things of hers in the near coming future. Um, so this is a test knit. It's called the Moon Drip Swan Show. And I have 5,000 bazillion stitches on my needles right now. Um, also, if you didn't, if you were not aware, um, Tristan has a podcast with her mom, Christy, which is called Two Girls in the Yarn Cafe. Her mom also has a yarn company called Yarn Cafe Creations. Um, both have beautiful yarn, and in fact, I am so excited about this. Um, my mom and I will be doing Tristan's advent calendar this year, and oh my goodness, I am so excited. <laughs> if my hands were not enough to be an example of how excited I am, just do both at the same time. Um, so yes. We'll talk about Advent later because we're going to be talking about that in this episode. Anyway, I have made a lot of progress. I have connected two thir uh, yeah, 36 inch cords from my Chow Goo set together to create one long one. And I know this looks kind of funny, but if we hold it out like this, hello. Wow, that's a good shot right there. Like this. So yes, it's a top-down colorwork swancho, and in fact I could put it on right now because this is the plus of having a bazillion inches long cord. So it fits perfectly. I'm very excited about it, and now you can't really see the moons, but there are moons. Ta-da! Um, I'm almost done with the color work. I have like one more section to do and then I have one more increase row which I think will put me at 500 more than definitely more than 500 stitches. <laughs> and then I divide for the sleeves. So that'll be nice. This the stitch count will definitely go down at that point. But this is what you have to do for the joys of knitting a swancho, which is totally worth it in the end because I love the idea of knitting a swancho and I've never done it before. So we're learning new things every day, people. This is awesome. Um, I am using three colors, obviously, which is what she asked for. We have Knit Picks is the brown, the green is also Knit Picks, and then this color here is a jitterbug. I said that jitterbug sock. Very old. 
and together we have my Moon Drip Swancho. It's truly amazing. Really loving it. I am oops, almost done with my green. I still have a fair amount of green left, but I'm almost done with my first, yeah, my first uh, main color. So that's exciting. Is that really just my first ball of the main color? I think it is. That's crazy. Hmm. Well, I'll be darned. Um, so yes, that's very exciting. Moving forward with that, um, I hope to get the sleeves divided for soon so I can have another, like, just knit until the cows come home project because you can never have too many of those people. You never know when you're going to need a project to just sit and knit and focus on other things. And you need, like, this, these forever, forever knitting in the round projects. They're the best. They're literally... They're, they're probably my favorite, if I'm being completely honest. Like, don't get me wrong, I adore color work. I adore cables. Lace can kind of, it depends on my mood. Um, <laughs> but knitting in the round stockinette is probably my favorite. Again, it's very soothing, it's very calming. It just kind of is just like, ah, I know this. This is easy. I'm fine. This is cool. It's all good, everybody. It's fine. But then let me just knit for 15 inches or whatever. This is, this is gonna be good. Another tea break, shall we? Let's take some tea breaks together. What time is it? Oh my goodness, it's only 11. What the poop? See, normally, okay, so here, this is why my schedule is a little wonky today. So, because my knee is, I like, it's fine, but I'm still being very careful with it. Um, it doesn't hurt to do anything. It just kind of gets stiff sometimes. And then, um, like, if you bump the bruise, it hurts. But that would be true of any bruise. Um, <laughs> so I did, uh, we went to Insanity this morning at 5.15 in the morning. So I've been up since the crack of dawn, if not before, uh, definitely before that. Um, so I did a very like low impact, no jumping, no nothing really, but I got still got a really awesome workout, which was great, and I sweat tons, also good. Um, didn't do anything with my knee, um, but normally I would do a double workout, and I would do insanity in the morning, and then I would go to the step class at our Y at 10.15, but to be careful with my knee, I did not go, and so that opened up a lot of time to do other things. So <laughs> I went and got groceries when the grocery store opened, and the laundry is almost done. It just needs to be folded. <laughs> I've already done all the tidying. It's great, and I'm going to get this done, and it'll be awesome. So I can have the day really to just kind of like chill, which is awesome. What was the point of saying that? I don't even remember. Just that my day is different. Oh, because it's earlier in the day. So normally I would be recording and it would be like two, three, four, um, because I would have done all the extra stuff or just the extra step class, which would have taken up time because then I would be showering time and all that jazz and then trying to get up the energy to actually fold the laundry and stuff like that. So Indeed, I have it down to a, like a science, but today is different. So this is why we are recording so early, and I'm sure you really wanted to know why I was recording at 11, because I'm sure that you would even know that. No, you wouldn't know that, and I apologize for showering you with information that you didn't really need to know or probably want to know. Anyway, let's move on to more fun knitterly topics. I've been knitting on this thing nonstop for multiple reasons. One of which is kind of silly and I'm sure people will appreciate. And the other thing is also because it's just absolutely beautiful and I really want to get it done. It is not a languishing whip as I started it this back in March. This is my 
Hand Spun Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. Can we just, oh my, it's very windy outside. Can you hear the wind blowing through something? It's whistling. Um, is that just not beautiful, everybody? Like, oh my goodness. So there are seven sections. I am almost done. I'm like halfway with section five, so I'm super close. I'm almost to the widest point with the most stitches, and then I start decreasing. So my rows will get smaller. All of this is out of my hand spun. Very old hand spun. I have no idea where I got the fiber or who the fiber is by, and I uh, apologize for that greatly. Ta-da! My beautiful hand spun. I'm so glad it's being put to good use and is being shown off in all of its glory, for it deserves the spotlight, for sure. And this pattern, thanks to Andrea Mowry, it is, it is beautiful. So the other reason why I want to get this done, and I've been working on it nonstop, is I really want these needles to do something else. I'm sure we can all relate to that. I'm trying to be so good, I'm trying to be so good, and not get more sixes. I understand, and I tell this to everybody at the store all the time. If they are lacking needles, I tell them they've come to the right place, because we have needles. But I'm trying to be really good about not getting needles that I don't necessarily need. And I know that I can wait. It's not that long. <sighs> Such a first world problem here. It's a first world knitter's problem. Um, so also, if you are new to the podcast, you might not be aware that I am a huge Stephen West fan. Stephen West is definitely one of my favorite designers, without a doubt. Um, and he released a pattern this past Friday, uh, which I did get, um, because I'm for sure making this. I just don't know when, once these, once these needles are available. Um, that is his spring cleaning shawl. And also, if you are new to the podcast, or if you're old to the podcast, I was phrased weirdly, I apologize. And this is no reference to anybody's age. Age is just a number. <laughs> Um, if you are an old-time viewer of the podcast, you would be aware, or even in just this past year, I'm trying to knit from my stash. I, that is, like, one of my big goals this year, is to knit from my stash as much as I can. And the fact that this is called Spring Cleaning Shawl is specifically for stash. Half skeins, full skeins, whatever. Like, it's perfect. And I know that it would be really fun to get new yarn for this, and probably I would love to do that more. But, I know I would love it, in the end, even more, <laughs> if I could knit it from my stash. And it's going to be very easy, because the yardages that he requires for the different sections are super easy to find. Like, I don't think you need a full skein for any one section. And I got a lot of those. A lot of those. Um, so that's very exciting. I hope to work on that soon. In fact, I would really like to pull out colors for that this afternoon. I think that would be super fun, and I would really like to do that, and I'd like to make that a goal. To have some me time and plan my spring cleaning job by Stephen West. To do once I cast this off, <laughs> so I plan it, get really excited, that encourages me to finish this quickly, so it's all good. I am very close to finishing this, though. I am super close. It's just a matter of time. My rows are really not that long. I really shouldn't be complaining. For having something, see, we have two sides of the, the spectrum here. So on one hand, I have something that will, in the end, be way over 500 stitches. And on the other hand, I have something that I'm complaining about it having 150 stitches. And I need to just get over it. <laughs> I need to calm down and realize it's just 150 stitches. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> um, I'm just impatient. That's
that's really what it boils down to and I want to cast something on. Um, I will say that also, side note, actually this is not a side note, so we're moving on from the shift. I've shown you the shift by Andrea Mowry, hand spun, all that jazz. Right before, was it two days before? The day before the accident. So Wednesday or Tuesday, I don't remember which one. I got some yarn, or I ordered some yarn, it should be here on Wednesday everybody. Um, and I don't, I don't think that's a problem. No. <laughs> I've already finished one finished like languishing whip for the year or for the year for the month and the past several months I have not cast on anything new as a treat for finishing more than one thing or whatever. Granted some of the months I didn't finish more than one thing so whatever you know what I mean. It's been a while that I treated myself the yarn was also on sale. Knit Picks was having a sale. It's coming tomorrow. Not tomorrow. On Wednesday. When you watch this, hopefully it should be arriving. Um, Kate Davies published a pattern um, recently that is a striped, like, everyday drop shoulder, card like, not a cardigan, sweater. It has a name that I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I know it is a Scottish word, I think, um, that she said means seafarer. Um, it could be, the, the name of the pattern could either be Sea Vager or Sea Viger. I have looked high and low how to pronounce this, and I can't find it anywhere. So if you guys have any ideas of how this is pronounced, how it should be, be pronounced, am I correct? Am I not? Please let me know, but nicely. But please let me know because I really, I really want to know how this is pronounced. It's just very interesting. There was also a link in the pattern to some um, Celtic Scottish music that was composed with this seafarer sea. Viger, see Vogger word in mind, um, and it's very beautiful. I don't know very much about that type of music, but it's very Scottish and awesome. So if you're a fan of Shetland, I think you would really enjoy it. Um, and that, I think, is also linked in the project page. Like, that does not exclusive to owning the pattern. Anyway, so I got that. It was very very impulsive. I'm not ashamed. I do not regret it. I'm very excited about it. I'm so excited. So that should be coming, and I don't know if that will be cast on immediately or what, but I'm very excited about it. Moving on. This is what I worked on when I was most stressed out on Thursday. I was sitting in my car weeping, trying not to cry. I heard a noise. I don't know what that was. Oh well. Must not have been anything. I was working on my no frills cardigan. This is not a cardigan. I keep calling things cardigans when they're not cardigans. Ta -da! This is my no frills out of La Bien Aimé Pop Grunge which I love and adore. And yes, I do realize that these skeins are different, but they're not different enough to be like, wow, that's a different skein. It kind of looks like I faded it, right? It totally does. It definitely does. Looks like I faded it in. Um, so I'm just gonna go with that. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, because I love this thing too much, and I actually really like how it looks, so. I'm the one who's going to be wearing it. If I'm fine with it, then it's okay. Uh, this is a pattern by Petite Knit. She has a lot of really good classic looking pieces, staples. This is literally just like a, like, your stapled pullover thing. Um, and it's such a soothing knit, everyone. It's just so soothing. I love it. 
this is a languishing whip. I don't remember when I cast this on. I think it was around last November? I think. Maybe December, maybe after Christmas. Because there I was flying. I, no, I think it was November. Because I think I knit on it when we were traveling for Thanksgiving. I don't remember. It's been a while. It's been more than six months for sure. So this is, yes, like I said, La Bienname, um, Pop Grunge, Petite Knit, all that jazz. I um, am doing 13 inches, I believe, from the bottom, from the sleeve, for my, the, bleh words technical words the length that I want from the armpit also side note uh Saturday we have discovered that we can get really cheap tickets if you go Saturday morning which is wonderful the tickets are only like six dollars it's awesome we went to go see Detective Pikachu and oh my goodness gracious it is wonderful um, if you at all are any kind of Pokemon fan, whether it be the new ones or the original ones, Sam and I are the original, hardcore, we love, they are just so cute, we love them. Played Pokemon Go, no shame, don't currently play it, but I definitely did play it. Um, it was amazing. Like, just so good. And the ending was so sweet. It was just like, oh my goodness, I love this movie! I knit a lot in that movie, maybe two inches, maybe three inches. It was great. So I might currently be at 13 inches, I don't actually know. So yeah, that totally looks like a fade, totally does. I'm very excited about this. So I should be starting the ribbing soon, which is really awesome, and then I can move on to the sleeves and... What is this knit on? These are sixes, right? Yeah. Then I can move this along. I don't know if I'll get this done for May. I don't think I will. I'm not going to pressure, my, pressure myself to get this done for May because I am really enjoying it. So that's fun. That's my pop grunge. No frill sweater. Fun times indeed. So moving right along, because my battery is getting close to dying, um, I have pulled out a languishing whip for myself to work on, and I'm going to make myself work on it because I need another small one to work on for the month of May. I do apologize, there is a little Christmas bell on this um, bag, or I've pinned it there, because this is, in fact, my advent cowl. This is the Adventurer Cowl by Amba O'Brien. This is what I have so far. This was the Advent calendar that my mom and I did from Suburban Stitcher. Diane, who is wonderful, um, this past year. So December 2018, we did this. And I haven't finished it. But... So I opened all the packages, like, forever ago, and I put them all, all the minis, in this bag, and I was like, well, I have no hope of figuring out which ones are which ever again. But I figured it out this morning. I was so proud of myself because I knew that, like, I remembered opening some of them, and I know based off of what the things are, like the last couple ones, I would assume that that's what they are, so... I have a ton of minis. <laughs> I would say spoilers, but seeing that it's May and I would assume that you're done with your advent calendar, <laughs> unlike me, um, I don't need to say spoilers. I think I have one more down in there, yeah. So these are the ones that have not been wound yet. I have a couple of the, the <laughs> balls that I wound by hand because that's what I do. These will not be that way because I'm trying to get this done. Um, yes, I'm very excited about this. I believe this one is called Polar Express, which I really love. Maybe? Maybe this one's Polar Express. I don't actually know. That was the one I was, un I was confused on. And also the Wet Bandits. 
these were the two that I didn't know. Oh well, either way, and I mean, placement doesn't really matter all that much anyway. So yeah. Minis. Fun times. Moving forward with my Adventure Cowl by Amba O'Brien. And hopefully, what I really need to do is put it on nice needles. I didn't actually have nice needles at the time. So the, the tips of these needles are pretty dull. And I think having sharper ones would definitely help my... Um, knitting progress and process um so again when in doubt change your needles it's really probably the problem so yes this is gonna be my new small thing to do it probably i'm gonna see how it goes at work because i said i wouldn't bring the shift to work but i did and, and it was fine um this pattern i remember being very hard for me to follow while at work um, just because there's so much fun going on around and I get distracted. Um, that might stay home, that might not, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. So yes, that is my new languishing whip to work on, besides the sorbet cardigan, which I didn't show you because it's, I've knit like five rows. <laughs> not too much to show. So I don't really have books to talk about, not really baking to talk about. I had a long story time at the beginning of this episode, and I do apologize that it was so long. Um, but it did have to do with knit knitting, and it, it does involve the knitting community, and I wanted to share that story because it is a special story, and that is something that I will never forget. Um, so that is all the knitting that I have to show you. I had quite a lot. I made a lot of progress this week. I'm very excited about it. Um, if you are interested in following me on social media or any of the things that I've talked about in this episode, please go check out my show notes, um, which are on my blog. Or if you're on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below. Um, I hope you have had a wonderful weekend, and I hope you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. Also, folding laundry that you do not procrastinate like I do, because I do that all the time. And then it never gets folded, and then it gets wrinkly, and it's really terrible. Um, <laughs> I would like to continue to make progress with all my items. I like to make plans for my spring cleaning shawl by Stephen West. That would just make me so happy. But I need to finish my shift first. I'm so close. I'm really so close. I really, like, I could see myself finishing it within the next two days, probably. I could see that. Maybe one, if I really tried. I mean, what time is it? It's, again, it's 11. It's like 11.30. It's fine. I, can, I have lots of time today. Because I'm protecting my knee. It must be time for me to knit. That's what it is definitely what it is yeah that's yeah without a doubt I'm gonna do that for sure anyway <laughs> I just got a new audiobook I'm super excited awesome it just came in from being on hold and I'm really excited about it it's called the Paris wife I don't remember who it's by we'll see how it is I feel like I have a copy of the book actually do I uh, it's on that I think it's on that shelf somewhere there it is yes Paula something that starts with an M anyway uh we'll see how it is if it's not interesting or whatever if it's not my favorite probably won't talk about it but if I really enjoy it I will share it with you next week hopefully while I work on my shift so show notes and all that jazz hope you have a crafty week thank you so much for watching this episode and all my ramblingness Again, let us discuss or just be excited about the fact that Dee Thompson won the skein of Hedgehog Fibers, which here it is. I, was, I thought I had lost it. Um, so Dee, again, if please get in contact with me some way or another, um, and so I can get your address so I can get that in the mail to you as soon as possible. Congratulations. Thank you again to everybody who entered. I'm sorry that you didn't win, but... I loved hear reading, hearing, whatever, everybody's answers. They were super fun to, to read. So thank you again for the thousand subscribers. It's so wonderful. It means so much to me. So with that, I have discussed all my knitting. I have discussed the events of last week and all that jazz. We've discussed the giveaway. 
And I plan to go fold my laundry and finish my shift, hopefully. That would be really awesome. We'll see if that actually happens. Anyway, with that, that is all that I have for you. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. The cat has come to say goodbye, but he is too far away for me to pick him up. But he says goodbye as well, so the cat says goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha